Alrighty, so we've just looked at causation, now we're looking at correlation, and this is a, a really fun, um, I think it's a fun topic to introduce, because it's pretty basic, uh, but it allows for some good thinking. Um, so we looked at IV, CVs, controls, and now we introduce the idea of correlations. And again, guiding question, just getting them to see how these things are related, the difference between these, these ideas of causation and correlation. Um, if they don't pick up these concepts, if all students don't get these in the beginning in, in this unit, which realistically they won't, not all of them will, um, it's fine, you know, you'll come back to it throughout. Uh, here's where I like to introduce the crossword puzzle, because um, I've at least had a few lessons, they should know at least half the terms, and that's in the back of the workbook. Uh, you've got the answers in the, um, in the activities files as well, uh, and also in the teacher edition of the workbook is the answers. Then, uh, this is a really interesting TED talk. Um, just if you just watch the two minutes here, and he talks about uh, the difference in performance uh, between people who use different types of web, uh, web browsers. And what they find is that Chrome and Firefox outperform the others. And then see if they can explain why. Right? Um, and then after, after you've given them a chance to, and, and shared uh, their possible explanations, you can look at the explanation that he, that Grant, um, the guy, in the TED talk gives and what he says you know it's not your browser it's not the browser that, that affects the personality or job performance you know it's the fact that um, it's your personality so the type of person you are who's going to work hard and have higher job performance is going to affect what browser you choose so so this is a good example of bi-directional ambiguity and a good time to explain that new concept here a bit of chalk and talk oh, about um, correlations what they mean real basic introduction now you can do this in two ways by this is a great website spurious correlations uh last year i just gave students five minutes just to flick through them but i didn't really they didn't really seem that into it um but then when i project them as a class and sort of we sort of did it collectively there seemed a bit more bit more energy and a bit more reaction to it so i like to project it as a class and talk about you know the, the nicholas cage and the pool drownings is just a funny one um so you can check those out then this, I think this is a, one of my best activities for um, looking at critical thinking, and it's not a bad one to do throughout the course. So there's a list of um, correlations, and they can be found in the blog post. Students read them, and then they have to come up with two possible explanations. So for example, let's look at the um, brain injury and aggression. All right, so this is correlated that there's um, the more damage in the prefrontal cortex is going to lead to higher acts of aggression, right? And particularly in the prefrontal cortex. This is a, a study we look at in the criminology unit. And they have to come up with two possible explanations. So the first logical one is going to be causal. It's going to be, all right, damage to the brain causes aggression. Then the harder one is the alternative explanation. And so it could be something like, well, maybe more aggressive people who are, uh, were more likely to get brain injury. And that's quite logical if you think about it if you're a really aggressive person who's not afraid to commit and not afraid of combat right you're going to be charging into battle you're going to be putting yourself in more situations where you're more likely to get um a, a injured brain the teacher workbook has sample answers to all of them um and then there's other possible answers for sure but i would give the students maybe 15 even 20 minutes just to read these with a partner and try and come up with two explanations for each of those results a really good lesson in critical thinking if they finish early, then they can go through and try to identify, are they positive uh, cor correlations or are they negative correlations? All right, and then just maybe reflect at the end. What's the difference? All right, and um, yeah, they should, uh, if, yeah, I, I wouldn't get them to worry about answering a guiding question for this one. They can in their notes if they like, but we just want to reflect and see if they get that. Um, I would set, set for homework if they didn't finish it to finish that correlational activity and to read this lesson in the textbook. And then we get into the last lesson of the introduction unit, which is psychological theories.